Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the other Saturday night again, and I cannot believe these two. I really cannot believe these two. We're joined tonight by Lex Paranormal himself. I just don't know where's the ejector button. And welcome to Brian John. Oh my God! He looks like a welcome. With that. Oh my God! This is just. Ah, uh, I just don't know, man. You know what? I'm laughing at Lex, but I'm also laughing at your intro because. This has got to be the only intro out there where it says at the end of the intro, you have to listen to these two these two idiots. Like, I've never, ever seen that. <laughs> but that's what the show's all about. I mean, we're, we're bald and we're bonkers. Yeah, but you got idiots in there, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, I know, but, I know. You know. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm, hopefully one day I'll get to visit Dakota and treat him to something. <laughs> It's bad enough you hit on my mother. What do you mean? Oh You've got a pretty, you have got a pretty mother. I can't help that. I can't, I can't help. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and she listens to this show, so I'm just saying she's very pretty. She's in the same age as me. She's in her young thirties, isn't she? I mean, she's pretty. I can't help oh, so it. I, I, I didn't know you were adopted, Dakota. Uh, uh, that, that... She's my mother's forty five. <laughs> it's like what well, I I'm getting confused here. What the it hell? It was it was one of these situations where there was a chap at the door one rainy night and the woman opened the door and there was this basket with a bald oh, child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris When did I become Harry Potter? Mother. <laughs> Fantastic show. <laughs> so guys let's share, let's share the picture. Let's share the picture yeah. of your mother. So everybody can uh, see your mom. No, I'm just, oh, kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I thought there's a certain picture I could show of him. But... <laughs> you can show that picture any time you want, Dakota. You wanted it. You asked me for it. So I did not want a picture of you deep getting... throwing up banana. So can, should we get started? See, so this is with the thing, show? guys. No, 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 no. This is why we're here before <laughs> before we go live here because we have to be professional. Perfection. He's hot. Where is he? He, he? He's doing there. He's doing there. He's hot now. You wouldn't say that wasn't the perfection. Yeah, yeah, I I really feel like uh, that chat we had backstage about this show is professional. I think Chris has just shot himself in the foot here. I know, I just have. But look, look, look at it this way, guys. The last time you were on, we started the show and we weren't really speaking. It was just a, an absence of quietness, you know, the tension. It was, but yeah, tonight, I do oh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, good memory, good memory. So, guys. Welcome to the show, and as it says, bald and bonkers, we're definitely bonkers. So guys, how was your trip to the United Kingdom? Well, I think Brian should answer that, because I never... Oh, yeah. I mean, Lex never left, so... <laughs> I know, he, he just he just wanders a bit, and it's, it's late. You, you know, it's it's it, it was definitely... Um, it was definitely an interesting experience all around. Like, obviously, I've been to the UK before. I've been to the UK a couple of times. and But going under this circumstance made it uh, really, really interesting. And there were a lot of a lot of really, really cool places that we went to. And m- my whole thing when I first started talking to everybody about doing this was, yes, the, the coming over to London was great. And, yes, doing the locations were going to be amazing. But it was really about meeting everybody else and collabing with everyone else 
that's what I was really looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And it didn't disappoint. It really didn't. Everybody was fantastic. And Portal to the Paranormal were amazing. Uh, Robert and Robert from, you know, the, the patrol were great. And, you know, John and Ralph, eh, they were okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. They were great too. <laughs> and, uh, they were amazing. And everybody <clears throat> we got to be up with and the people that we met and the places that we went to was just incredible. It was, it was an amazing experience. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. So Lex, did you have a good time? I was actually just about to say, out of all the teams he listed about meeting them and it was great to meet them and stuff, he didn't mention me in that list, did he? No. <laughs> well, based on the video I saw of Ryan announcing that he made it over to the UK and you blinking three times to say that you're in a hostage situation, I think we can't really air that out there now. Just wait. Oh my god! Oh dear uh, Jesus! I just well, died, what I was going to say, what I was going to say after the amazing part, um, and obviously the 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 best thing out of all of it was getting finally to meet Lex in person. And mm -hmm. uh, it, I, wh where do I even begin with Lex? He's oh. he he was everything I thought he would be in person, um, but a little bit more. Um, he did give me, and I say this on another podcast, he did give me shit a couple of times. Mm. And uh, <laughs> he called me out a couple of times. But overall, no, it was, it, all kidding aside, it was it was a great experience meeting everyone. And as, yeah. obviously as Lex as well. But, you know, it's just, it was it was different. It was different than it is here in North America. It's completely different. And the energy is different. The, oh, yeah. the experiences were different. Uh, meeting, um, going to all these places and knowing what you're kind of walking into. And, you know, that you come to some places in Canada and you're told what you're walking into. But I just found going there and going to these places, you know what you're walking into. But then there was more. Then there was more. Then we found out more. And it was like it was just a great experience. It really was. Yeah. And, and yeah. I plan to go. I plan to go back. Um, I don't know when, but I plan to go back for sure. Well, you sh you definitely need to come back, and especially Scotland. I want you yeah. to come to Scotland because yeah. I think I think you and Lex in Scotland. I think that would be a hat. I think it'd yeah. be awesome, you know. So Lex, oh, yeah. so Lex, how is it for you, my good friend? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I agree with the points that Brian said. That meeting everyone was really yeah. cool, and the best thing for me was learning learning how the others do it because i've never teamed up with anyone before <clears throat> so but being in this game for a, a, almost two years and that entire time i've been watching brian do his videos to see how he does it in person um was a really yeah. cool thing for me like i really took that like i don't like being like this fanboy like thing because i'm not a fanboy of brian i'm a friend of brian <laughs> but um <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, right. you, you know oh, what I mean. You, you know what I mean. Take like, that so oh, sideways, but oh god! I, I've, I've, oh, it's all, I've need to make t-shirts. Like, yeah, it's like a mentor thing. So, like Brian helped me do my first video. Uh, helped me get confident in doing my videos by just being supportive of me from Canada by commenting on my yeah. on my videos and messaging me on Twitter. But then to be working alongside him during the tour, where I got to learn from the man himself. And I could see, like, I saw a lot of what I do wrong and a lot of what I do right just by being in the same room while he's doing investigations and stuff. So the yeah. most important thing for me, other than meeting everyone and, and collabing, was actually the, the huge learning experience that I think it was for not just myself, but everyone that was on the group. Uh, but also <clears> learning <throat> that, I don't know if it's just me, does anyone get the idea that Brian's really tall if you haven't met him in person? Because it, I was really thrown off that he's my height. It was really yeah. weird. Like I'm not a tall guy. I'm five eleven. But I oh. remember that, like me and Brian had this chat, and I was like, "How tall are you, by the way?" Because I have a feeling you're going to be like six four. And then he's like, "No, I'm not." And then I met him in person. I was like really thrown off by the height because <laughs> of cameras you can't yeah. tell. So yeah. learning the fact that he's also my height was also a massive confidence booster for me. So that was yeah. good. <laughs> but the two years, the two years are the perfect match, and the two really good ghost hunters together. I mean, Lex, I know your videos are amazing, and Brian, amazing mm. ghost hunter. You know, the two years together are awesome. See, there you go. Look, look, you see. together mm. in the dark, such a perfect yes. harmony. 
in the dark, lonely at night. <laughs> you were talking about playing with your balls, so. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, Brian was telling us tonight he's got some amazing footage he's got to show us. It was uh, him and Lex were playing with the balls, so they'll be yeah. doing it shortly. <laughs> <laughs> so just to so put that out there for those yeah. listening to the audio version of the podcast, <laughs> every guy, every you can enjoy guy, the visuals. Yeah, mm-hmm. every guy is uh, is a fan of balls. I yes, what they say. Yeah. It's a fan of balls. Christmas time, balls. Mm-hmm. I said, balls. I said this time you've got three balls. So it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at when they be bald and bonkers. Oh, you know, I had to bring that up. You know, but you know, listen, you know, we need to get Lex to shave so he can be initiated. Yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. I like, uh, I like what Lex said there, and by learning off everyone, and you know, there were some things that I learned that I didn't, I'd never seen before. Like, you know, what some of the things that Portal did, Portal to the Paranormal, they did a few things yeah. that I'd never seen before. I've heard, but I've never actually seen them, and it was a great experience. And I think that's another thing too. Um, when I first started talking about it to everyone, was we're going to learn off everyone we're going to become yeah. better investigators because of this experience and mm-hmm. and we did and mm-hmm. you know some of the footage that we some of the, like some especially the footage we're going to be showing today um was amazing and the experiences were amazing and you know i learned things off lex as well um and i and and everybody else for that matter but yeah i like what lex said because it, it was definitely true yeah yeah so, Dakota, what you doing so, there? I, <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> okay, I'm starting to glitch out. Something's happening. So, shall we get into this footage? I'm really excited to see some yeah, of this, considering the, knowing the, some oh, of the you locations. Want to get into you want sure. to get into the footage? Okay. Let's do yeah. it. So, um, we what that. I'll do is I'll set that up, and then uh, Lex, we, Lex will show the mausoleum first. Yeah, and then you can talk about the mausoleum and uh, its story. Um, yeah, yeah. And I will set that up. Is any of you guys get any country about you? Any what country? Kids, Kids. round about yeah. I just heard a little girl laugh. No, no, I heard that too. No, not did me. you hear that? Okay, no, that okay. I was literally seeing some sort of like orange orb. Hearing right next to me is like okay. okay I'm you, well, I am going to tell you. There Bust out the salt. Here, so there is something. Here. <laughs> I see it every so often. That was yeah. that was so creepy that it, it was kind of like it was kind of like it was like a kind of hey, I don't know vent to spray. I've only got some Volvic. <laughs> um, that was so weird that because I've got the, the headphones on, and I could I could hear the little girl's laugh. It was like something you would see in a hear in a horror show. I don't know who that is. Okay, so I'll let you. Uh, 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 so, did you guys put this up on the stream? I can't see you guys because. Yeah, it's up, it's up, it's up. Yeah, okay. you're up. It's up. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to show the mausoleum first, and uh, Lex, yeah. if you can tell them the history, that'd be great. I don't want to, to say the history now and then do the video, yeah? Yeah, you might as well tell them what, to, what it's about first before we show the video so it makes a little more sense. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, so the first one, as we said, is a, a mausoleum, and I can't quite remember yeah. which town we're in at this point. It's like a small village uh, near Portsmouth, I think, uh, in Havant, sorry, or maybe just beside Havant. Um, but the mausoleum's really cool because it's empty. There's no, there's no one in it, which is really weird. But um, <clears throat> we found out that the, the people that were supposed to be in it, uh, the, it was a, a man and wife, Whose name esca- uh, escapes me? I think it's like I think it's Lawrence. Lawrence and Emmeline. Emmeline, yeah. Or Emmeline uh, or something. Emmeline, like yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Lawrence <laughs> Emmeline. And when he, they were building the mausoleum, um, so they could obviously both be in there. Uh, but uh, but he died yeah. very early on, so he was buried somewhere else. So she finished the mausoleum off, and she had him excavated and brought over to the mausoleum, where they found out that the lead-based coffin that he was in couldn't fit through the door so they couldn't Ooh, put him inside right. uh so he's actually buried about 10 feet in front of it so like oh, literally so you can be more beside it right like to the, the to but the it's wall. a bit forward and then to, yeah. to the side yeah, so, right. uh, right. yeah, yeah like diagonally but he's still it's only about like between five and ten feet so he's not miles away uh but she's actually buried there too so she died 30 years after him 
and she was buried next to him again outside of the mausoleum so they could be together uh yeah so as as far as mausoleums go it's the first one i've ever come across that no one's using but they've kept it up all these years and i think that's a it's a really beautiful thing but the main question that we had while we were there was did this prevent lawrence and emmeline from being able to talk to us were they going to be able were they still going to be there because they're not in the mausoleum so they might not have been yeah um so we ran some tests and what we're about to show you confirmed our suspicions now what i want you to keep in mind too the um there was a 30 year span between each of them dying and that's important also right. in this okay here we go Okay, let me ask you a question. Are you buried here? Light it up if you are. Hey, you just, just went off. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I heard a step behind, towards the back of the mausoleum. So you're buried here. Light up the ball. Did somebody just go, ooh? I just heard a ooh. Can yeah. you light up the, the thing at the top of the step? You like as unraveling your story. What was the man's name that was buried here again? Lawrence. Lawrence Shaw's story, and she's Emmeline. Lawrence was his first name. Lawrence. Yeah. If your name's Lawrence, light it up. <laughs> if your name's Lawrence, light it up again. Wow. What was her name again, sorry? Emmeline. Emmeline? Emmeline. Emily. 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 Okay, can you stop it? Is there an em Emily here? Emmeline. Emmeline? Yeah. Is there an Emmeline here? Wow. Thank you. Is uh, Emmeline buried here? Lawrence, are you buried here? Is it true that you were buried somewhere else and you came here? To get buried here? Yeah. Are you two together? Oh, wow. Oh, that was really good. That's really That's good. Good. Yeah. That was brilliant. Right. It's kind of romantic, isn't it? <laughs> That's incredible. Love. That was incredible. And the KT is going up as well, man. Oh, very cool. Uh, so what I wanted to say, just for the people that you said you've got audio listeners who haven't, who can't see the video, um, we have a light up cat ball on the steps outside of the mausoleum, uh, the ones that light up if they're touched. And every question that Brian was asking um, regarding to them moving to the cemetery, are they together and so As soon as you finish the question, the ball lit up. Uh, but as you can see, from the, if you come back and watch the video footage that we put up on here, you'll see that none of us are near it enough to touch it. And we did check that there was nothing leaning on it. Um, and after we did that test, the balls actually didn't light up again for at least 30 minutes. So we know there was nothing manipulating that, it other than people asking us questions. But that, You know what I found that interesting good. is that one question where I said, is Emily, <laughs> I said the name wrong. Yeah. And it didn't light up. Didn't light when up, I yeah. said the name right, yeah. it did light up. Mm -hmm. and, and the uh, same same thing yeah. when you asked if he was originally buried there and it didn't light up and then you said were you buried somewhere else and then was you moved here and then it lit up which confirmed what we read uh, the story from so that is truly I, I think amazing. what I found amazing was the fact that you know <clears throat> people always ask these questions on you know on their <clears throat> on their investigations 
you we're we're totally i don't think we're totally clear or not that you know when two people that are in love die are they together and there was a 30 year yeah. span that they weren't together and they somehow found each other so i really think that's going to answer a lot of questions that people ask are you two together or you loved mm -hmm. him are you with him now you know those type of questions that people ask well that just simply stated right there that they're together even though they died 30 years apart yeah and it was just a it was it was an incredible incredible moment I'd and, also, oops, sorry, Karen ahead. Renzo. I was just going to say, I'd also like to make it important. Uh, we had a rule during this investigation, uh, all our investigations, where the groups that were taking us to these locations, we instructed them not to tell us anything about the place unless it was something we needed to know beforehand. So we needed to yeah. know uh, the names of the of the graveyard, of whoever owned the mausoleum. So we had to know that, and we had to know when they died. So that's how we knew about the 30-year difference. Mm -hmm. um, we had to find out everything else whilst we were there so the questions that brian is asking like when we found out about the 30 year thing we were actually reading the gravestone or trying to read yeah. the gravestone because it's old it's like 1800s or something <clears throat> so like this was a really cool thing as well we didn't go into this knowing this story we found out bits and pieces what we needed to know to start doing questions and when we didn't know about the how long the gap was we actually went like brian was still doing questions about a different uh, trying to do some other questions and me and Portal to the Paranormal were trying to take the moss off of a gravestone so yeah. we could read the years and work out what the first, if it was 5, 10, 30 years. So it, uh, I think that's very important for anyone who is investigating is not to go into it with a, a, a shit ton of information. Sorry for the language. Uh, a lot of information okay. that you're reading online because you don't want to influence your investigation. Mm -hmm. And that's what's great about this one is it wasn't influenced. We only found out about these little bits and pieces as we were going along. And then we confirmed them all. Uh, and at the end, we actually found history about them. So <laughs> yeah. it was a really, I found, cool, really cool time. I found it amazing when you started, when you, when you mispronounced her name and the ball didn't flash. But then when you said it right, mm. it flashed. And I thought I thought to myself, that, that that is one of the best bits of evidence I think I've ever seen. That was really You know, good. You know it's funny because we I didn't show it in this video, but... Um, <clears throat> There is a certain part during while we're doing this that I actually cut what looks like to be a shadow going along the stairwell towards the equipment, towards the cat balls and towards the REM pod. It's, a, really? it's white and it's moving slowly along the stairwell going towards it. And even during that investigation, this happened quite a few times. At one point during this investigation, there was a light that came out from the mausoleum, went around the corner, and went into the mausoleum. And it was okay. visible by everybody as well. Like that wasn't we didn't see that through the camera. You saw that with your own eyes. I only missed one. Uh, I think it happened three times that I remember. If I remember, one of them I didn't see because it. I was actually filming like this, and my shadow is on the mausoleum, so I'm blocking Brian's light. So obviously yeah. I'm casting the shadow on the wall and all you hear is everyone who's with us start shouting about this white light that's just gone across my shadow. And we couldn't okay. explain it because I, I'm blocking the only light source for the day. There's no reflections off of anything because of the only camera that I'm using is pointing down at the equipment from where I was stood yeah. in the video. Um, and yeah, across my shadow, the, the same white light thing happened. So we had that one. We had one go across the stairs, like Brian just said, around the equipment, and then the one that went uh, out of the mausoleum, around, and then back in. So it was visible to the human eye, which was probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. That's yeah, it was, um, the, whole, the, whole, the whole experience, and, and Lex said this on another show, we, when we first walked in there, honestly, we weren't. Ex it was so quiet and so yeah. dead silent. We weren't, no pun intended, I'm sorry for that, but... Um, um it, we didn't think we were going to get anything to i think we had a we had a discussion about this like when we was doing the getting the setup ready to do the intros and stuff and we were like i'm not sure how much we're going to get because we have our own feelings about <clears throat> graveyards anyway that we both kind of agree on that we don't think graveyards i've 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 only been to two and only one of them and it's the mausoleum one something happened yeah. and the other one i didn't really get anything Brian's had the same thing where graveyards aren't really that active for him, but we watch it all the time that people were getting good stuff in graveyards. So I went in there like, this is going to be a cool video to do because it's a cool shot. 
I yeah. didn't think we were going to walk out of there as... I mean, I was my personally, you can tell, as Matt said, my reactions in the video, you can see how I react to the, what's happening in front of me. And I yeah. can't hide my natural look of fucking shock when it happens. Yeah. So <laughs> apparently he loves my reactions. I don't know why. I, I keep seeing it now as well. Every time I watch that clip, I just see how my face yeah. just beads into a grin. Well, it's funny uh, because, yeah, because it's funny because at one point when I think it was the, I think it was one, one of the, I think it was the second last question and we look at each other and I'm going... Like it's, it's unbelievable. And that's only part of it. Like I didn't show the whole thing. And it was just like, it was, it was like, we were stunned. We were stunned. I'd never seen anything like, like I've seen people get responses on cat balls or spirit balls or whatever you want to call them, but not to this extent, like question after question after question Uh, is being answered. And it was like, these people just want to talk. They just want to talk. Like maybe they're sick of each other. (laughs) <laughs> and they and they, and they spoke. <laughs> the, the the other cool thing as well is especially in the mausoleum one, which is I you know I will talk about the other ones in a bit, but the the yeah. mausoleum ones, uh, they spoke to us for ages. Like that that little portion there is, I think it's a twenty eight to thirty two minute long questioning series we did, mm. and yeah. eventually it stops. And like I said, we left the I think Brian left the tape recorder on like the whole time <laughs> it was on the staircase, um, and we go off and we're doing other stuff and none of the equipment is going off on the stairwell at all after we finish engaging with it. And then obviously when, which we'll talk about in a minute, Brian's accident, it starts to activate again. And it's almost like they're laughing with us because we're laughing at Brian. And what accident it was just really was cool. <laughs> yeah. I have to say this. I well, this is this. the mention of jock straps earlier. So you know, I have to say this. I have to say this before, before Lex says the story about me falling, we asked the question, we asked the question, did you laugh at Brian too? And the ball lit up. Mm-hmm. And it kept doing it as well. Like, yeah. you know, when you, you know, when you're laughing a lot and you're like, you keep laughing, you're laughing, you stop to take an intake of breath and then you just remind yourself of it. So you just start laughing again. The yeah. cat ball stopping and starting was almost mimicking us laughing because we were all doing it. We we're all laughing heavily, stopping for a brief second, laughing again, stopping, laughing again, because it was just funny. Uh, we obviously checked if Brian was okay after we finished laughing, but <laughs> it, 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 you, in the um, in in the video that we because we've got it on camera and it's going in a blooper uh, a end shot a blooper reel of the tour on my end, um, and you can actually see like, I'm trying not to laugh because I'm still on Brian's camera and yeah. I don't know if he's hurt himself, so I'm on the thing I'm filming through the window of the mausoleum when he does it, and I look and you can see that I would don't, you can see that he's like don't laugh. Don't, you, he might be hurt. Don't laugh. And then as soon as he gets up, he's like, "I'm okay." I just broke. And I I was laughing, but the cat balls were almost mimicking the pattern of laughter. Um, so we asked, "Did you? Were you? Are you also laughing at Brian?" And it went off again. Um, <laughs> but it was really. It was like it was like the they most have a sense of humor. They have a sense yeah. of humor. It, it was like the most yeah. communicative pair of spirits that I've come across in my short time yeah. of doing it. Usually you get some responses, then they go away. Something else comes in and talks to yeah. you, or depending where you are. But this was like yeah. in, like coherently, constantly for thirty to forty minutes of react of like when you put it all together, forty minutes. It is back to back communication constantly, and we kept checking. It's it was amazing. the same people we're talking to as well, and it kept lighting up when we said their names. So it was it's easily one of the high, the biggest highlights of the tour. Now I will say before. The reason before, okay, I fell. We all know that. So we were doing a No, lot. no, you didn't <laughs> fall. You ate, you ate shit. You went down a hill twice. <laughs> so, so, when I, so before that, I, I just want to say, I just want to say before that, the reason I went up beside the mausoleum, but I can't remember if it was uh, Rosie or Sarah that said they saw a shadow walk away from mm. the mausoleum. And so I went up there to see if I could see anything. So then when I came back down, I stopped, thought I heard something. Then I proceeded to walk, forgetting that I was on a little hill. And I went, boom, right down. And I stopped myself. And then I fell again. And, and almost, uh, almost hit a tree. <laughs> yeah, I almost hit a tree. Well, my side hit the tree. Your my side hit the tree, was, yeah. And I thought it was, uh, it was painful. All the, I've just had the vision there. I've the vision of this guy for you. <laughs> I'll just wait till the video comes out because it's literally the funniest oh, thing. It I'm is the funniest thing. <laughs> like, wait, wait. But, but then, the bit... spirit ball, then the spirit ball goes off and everybody's laughing. 
And then I just happen to ask a question. Are you laughing at me? Or somebody asked a question. I think it was, I, are you laughing at me falling? I think you asked it and it yeah. went off. And then we asked again. I was like, do you find it funny that Brian <laughs> fell over? And it went off again. Oh, sorry. Oh, so, uh, yeah. so that obviously very, very, obviously very, very intelligent. Yeah, and, that's uh, yeah. for for to answer the questions that it was answering, and it's going to be, it's like we went to a lot of phenomenal places, and but this place was, and it's funny because sometimes you walk into a place like you know you think okay I'm not going to get anything in here, and then it's the complete opposite. Like we walked into yeah. another place um, that I'm going to show the clip of now. Yeah. We walked into another place called the 1940s room, Ooh. and. I, when I first walked in, yes, I thought like when I first walked in, I go, okay, we're not going to get anything here. I, I started walking outside and all of a sudden I felt, I felt there was a woman, there's a man and there's a child there right off the bat. And, uh, but when I first walked in, I go, oh God, it's like, it was a cesspool of a woman that's collected crap over 60 years. It was like, right. it was, it was like a hoarder's dream. So and it was so much yeah, stuff to, to give everywhere. you some to give you some context yeah. of what the tea room is it's called the yeah, 1940s tea room and right. it's basically the, it's a little tea room like very british tea room uh, the ceiling is about 6 foot 2 off the floor so you're very like boxed in um and everywhere all over the walls the shelves yep. the floors the ceilings there is memorabilia of world war 1 and 2 all over the walls uh, on the second floor, they have another layer of uniforms, clothing, board games, more war memorial stuff. They have the letter of surrender by Germany on the wall, stuff like that. So it is incredibly packed full of this war memorabilia. Um, so when Brian didn't think we'd get anything, I had the inkling that we would because of what it was in the on the walls, but it was packed. Okay, so we're, can you see it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's okay. up. Okay, I'm going to play it. Here? Did you hear that? Yeah. We just heard a, a like a large thumping upstairs. K2 is going, going off now in here. What was little then? Just turned off the phone. Then. Oh wow! Look at that. Oh. Balls. Okay. Oh my and God. Going okay. Well. All the bits going off. Got REM pod and the balls. That's fantastic, that was. Thank you. Thank you for touching it. The, the, the K2 is <laughs> still, still going well. off. I see, guys, we're getting some really good... Can you can you, can you play that again, could yeah. you? You want me to play it again? Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. sure. I can hear the storm. Upstairs. Upstairs. Here? Did you hear that? Yeah. We just heard a, a like a large thumping upstairs. K two is going off now in here. What was little then? Just turned off the phone. Then. Oh wow! Look at that. Oh, okay. Oh, my and God. The going okay. Well. All the bits going on. Got REM pod and the balls. That's fantastic, that was. Thank just, you. It's just brief to cut. Thank you for touching it. Yeah. What, uh, what I find interesting, and I heard it for the first time playing this video, and I don't know, I'll have to go back and listen to it again, but I thought I heard somebody sneeze. I heard that too. I thought I heard someone 
as if they were like sniffing or something like. Yeah, I thought that's I what I thought. Somebody, it sounds like it sounded like somebody sneezed. Could potentially be Nando because he it could be it or could me. Be. Yeah, it could be. So I'll have to go back and look at your footage. Yeah, uh, uh, I can. <clears throat> at the, what at we the find start, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say at the very start of it, I could hear like a, a light thud. It's like a th- yeah, it, it, it was directly above us. Yeah, it was like it's as if somebody jumped off of something onto the floor. Mm-hmm. 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 That's what it was like. And, yeah, you know, it was really um, this place was really super cruel. I think it was the most active place we had during the whole investigation. It was very active, uh, and this is what I was saying at the beginning of the show um, when learning about stuff. Uh, I'd never yeah. seen it. I'd heard it, but I'd never seen it before. Uh, the, the portal to the paranormal do this little experiment where they have a glass and they turn the glass upside mm-hmm. down. They put a marble in the center of uh, the glass. And then they obviously do the circle and talk or whatever they're saying. But uh, I'd never seen that before. I'd heard it, but never seen it. And mm-hmm. um, it's trying to get the what's ever there to move the marble. So it proves that nobody around us is moving the marble. And they asked a question, and boom, it went right across the glass, right up against the glass. Yeah. And that, now, I will say that we made sure the table was even, and it wasn't uneven, and, um, and it was cool. And just to let everybody know, I did have my phone there, and the K2 was going off, but I want people mm-hmm. to know that my phone was on airplane mode. So yeah. it wasn't going, wasn't affecting the K2 whatsoever. So yeah. and it was we just do, a we... really, really cool yeah. moment. Yeah, and yes. we did this at the beginning of every test we made sure because um, the only person whose phone was probably admi- admitting was Nando, who was posting a live stream of the investigation, but he was stood way by the front door. He's behind me, and you can't even see me in the shot, and I'm to the left of the screen. So he's nowhere near it to do it. Uh, I just think it's really interesting uh, yes. because that's that was a K2, three spirit balls, and the REM pod, and all going off at the exact same time but even better than that which i I think i I think i might have turned the camera to film where the other guys are Mm -hmm. there's another side of the room behind us like we're in one room then there's an adjoining room next to it with no door which is where the counter Mm -hmm. is and the tea tables and there's a table in there which is where apparently all the most active stuff happens according to the owner yeah um, it's also where my camera chose to break for no reason. So, so mm. it's a fun mm. thing, uh, which is yeah. still broken. But the girls were doing a, I think they were doing a Ouija board or a sound box test where they do the motion box on the table. So it lights up if the, if it's moved, vibrates. Yeah. And yeah. they're all just sat there. So, and at the time that our stuff start, as soon as our stuff went nuts, um, their K2s, they had three or four K2s around that room. All of them went to yeah. red at the same time that our equipment went off as well. So that was really cool as well to know that. And the thump you had upstairs, none yeah. of us were upstairs at the time because we weren't allowed. We weren't sure if we were allowed up there. But the owner then let us up there. But you know what was it was like. No one up there. You know what it was like. And I can this has got to sound strange, but if you've ever had kids in the house, it, it was like it was like something light, but jumping down. Mm. And mm. You, you notice, and then you yeah. notice. Like a couple of seconds later, the cat ball started going off. So it makes you wonder if they've heard whatever's up there's heard you and it's decided to come down. Oh, we know something heard us because there's, there's oh, yeah. a particular question that I asked that really, really got us going for the evening. Um, we were asking about, I think there was a child that we were asking about for the predominant mm. for the first part of it because Brian immediately knew about a woman and a child and he said the man, but we were focusing a lot on the woman and child. Um, and I got the idea while we're doing, I think we, we might have been doing a spirit box and the REM pod at this point. I had a an inkling that this stuff is filled with war memorabilia. Yeah. We we just, I mean, earlier that night, me and Brian were educating some of the portal guys, like, what do we mean by residual en- energy and stuff like that? So I, I, I remember saying to them, I was like, there's probably something in this room that's brought something into here. Yeah. Whether it be a, 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 all the uniforms on the wall were worn. So they've seen the war. So mm. I was like, there's, there's, maybe yeah. there's an attachment on here. So I just got the idea. And as when I was asking the questions, the REM pod was lightly trickling. So something was near enough to it, but not enough. It wasn't grabbing it or anything. It was just like l- light noises. Mm-hmm. Um, while we're asking if there's a man present and I was asking if he was happy to talk to us and all this. And it was, it was agreeing with me. Uh, and then I said, uh, did you die in, I think I said World War One. I, I think I said, did you die in World War One?" 
and it was almost as if someone had grabbed the aerial. It went so high pitched that there was no mm. denying that it was a strong yes. Like this, this person was a, very aware that they were killed in the war. Um, and then I proceeded to ask, like, is there something of yours that's in this shop? Again, it answered yes. Uh, and when I asked if it's one of the uniform jackets that are along the stair wall, it went off again. So I ended up putting on one of these jackets for the rest of the night. But uh, this is, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Like, in terms of in terms of equipment and activity, we had like I believe we had a kid messing with us. Uh, I think the marble yeah. upstairs. But uh, to add to the point of the marble thing that Brian said, it, there was a point. Not only did we get to the point where the marble was pushed from the center to we asked if you want to speak to someone, point the marble to who you want to speak to. And it shot to Rosie, uh, Sarah from Paul. And then, and again, we, me and Brian were still looking at this test skeptically. We were like, maybe, maybe it's just rolled off center. I don't know, but we kept trying to fix it. Um, and then there's another one where we said, can you rotate the marble without pushing it? And the marble is still against the side of the glass. And all of us are just holding the top like this. So we can't yeah. move. You couldn't spin a marble on its in this in the one spot you couldn't wow. just turn it and i i think it's on my footage i think i've definitely got it um you can see the marble turning on its own underneath the glass on the like on what, that, in right? one yeah, spot so yeah, yeah so standing not, in yeah. one spot like sitting in one spot and it's just it was just starting to spin starting to spin around and it was uh, it was just super cool and what i thought <laughs> uh, i thought what, what was really cool too because you know i know a lot of people are getting into the cat balls and stuff like that and using them and i say this and i t- said this on other shows like they even there was a box there was a box right beside us and it had a coffee maker in it okay mm-hmm. so yeah. they actually put one of the spirit balls in the box and the, the ball was going off wow and it was just like so nobody was touching it and and the k2 was going crazy while we were up there as well and yeah. the 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 place was uh, the, obviously i felt the woman i felt the child but the man's mm-hmm. presence was the stronger out of all of them and uh he uh it was just one of those things where you you walk into a place and you go you know what yeah there's going to be a lot of residual here because of all the memorabilia that was everywhere yeah but um that place turned out to be i mean (laughs) that place turned out to be amazing i mean i don't know i don't know if that is tonight but i think something's followed you Hey, Brian, or, or Lex. I yeah, don't I know that, that is... Did you see? I just had something come across my face right now. Actually. I, I don't know that is right. I don't practice this. I don't. I can see them, but I don't practice in it. That's what I need clear to people. Mm-hmm. I don't practice in this kind of stuff. But there is someone standing behind Brian, right? And I'm sensing it's a, a child, mm. a girl. Mm. I don't know. It, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, I seen something moving about, but. We'll just leave that. Would you put? What's going on? I, you know, it's funny. Before I started the show, I closed that closet. It's weird, and it's open. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go on to the. Um, this is. Yeah. I'm going to show this one because I think this is a good one because I know you guys put on your thumbnail men in tights, and I think uh, <laughs> I had to show. I had to show a clip for showing for us. Come on. So, the two years um, look lovely in tights. <laughs> <laughs> now, now this is going to blow you. This is going to blow you away. Um, and it blew us away when we were there, obviously. Um, I'm going to set it up. Lex can tell you what happened. And it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Which bit are we showing here? The one where you ask about the, uh, the, the Vikings. settlement. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, in terms of Sherwood Forest not only being famous for being Robin Hood's hideaway, uh, you know, with the 1,000-year-old tree in the middle, um, we actually found out that further down, um, GSI told us that there was an original settlement of Vikings camped down the hill. And that's what, you know, when they came here, that's where they went. And we pretty much ignored this information for the the entire time we really focused on the robin hood side of things because it's sherwood forest why wouldn't you um and we got to this point and we're just a, we're a bit further into the forest at this point just past the big tree and again we're asking questions like are you an outlaw uh, we were actually being followed by uh, a female spirit down the pathway but she wouldn't come as far as us at this point she stopped mm-hmm. before this part of the clearing um, and we thought that was really strange as well, as if she's not allowed to go there or she's scared of something this yeah. side. Um, 
But there's never they've never reported negative energy here. This is they just felt like you were surrounded by people or you were being constantly watched by people in the spot that we're standing. And we got that. We under, we felt that as well. But we started to ask, "Are you the woman standing on the on on the uh, behind us over there? If you are, we invite you to come down." Uh, didn't get anything. And then I decided I, I just remembered it. Like I think just after. Uh, Ralph's asks if, if you're an outlaw, which you might not be able to understand because of his accent. He says outlaw, so just a, <laughs> it's, it's a toughie. Um, and I decide to ask, uh, are you are you anyone from the Viking settlement that originally settled here? And I got one of the one of, if not the clearest response I've ever had to a question during an investigation so far. Let's see it. Let's see it. Are you hiding from us? Are you hiding from us? Are you an outlaw? Are you a part of the Viking settlement camps that were here? Of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was so good. <laughs> Thank you. You're a part of the Viking settlement camps that were here. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Are you a part of the Viking settlement camps that were here? Of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's amazing. That is... That's it's it just catches it, of course. Yeah, and it's yeah. really weird because, I, and I did ask the right questions during this. Like, I and since we've done this, and I think I'm putting it in the video. Like, there's a bit where I talk about this, where oh, mm-hmm. sorry about that, I forgot how to breathe. Um, <laughs> that was really weird. Sorry, well, I don't you heard that noise. <laughs> Uh, that was um, <laughs> that was weird. So I, I get so excited talking about this particular clip. So, um, but I actually did a thing where I, I talk about the fact that I was like, but it came through in English. Um, right. And what I've taken away from that is one, they either at this point had learned how to speak it because they obviously didn't come here speaking English. So, yeah. or and I really pressed this matter further in the investigation because I believe that there was female prisoners of the campsite from here and i think one of and i i think i came to a personal conclusion that if it wasn't a viking talking to me it could potentially have been a captive of this nation who were taken to their camp that was speaking to me because uh, in in our tour we actually do get responses in different languages we had one that said hello to us in russian uh, okay. or another and stuff like that so which i really like because i love the fact you yeah. people just seem to edit out foreign responses because they can't yeah. understand it, but you can translate it. So we did that. So I do, I, I know some skeptic people who we've shown this clip to have said, yeah, but they're speaking English. And I'm like, yeah, but this could be a hundred different things. They could have learned it because we don't know how long they were settled for here. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know how what well their grasp of English was anyway. Um, you know, none of us were there. And two, uh, they're very renowned for taking people into their camps. And yes. later in the investigation, we actually asked for permission to speak to someone that they've, they're have they holding at the camp. And the response we get later on is you uh, only one or talk to her or something like that. So like I we get given permission to speak to this one thing, one person. That's and, then it cut, and then it cuts me off when I try to do that. It then intervenes and stops me from talking to said person. So I gen- personally, for me, in my video, when I express it, I personally believe I'm talking to someone who has been held prisoner by the campsite. But yeah. a big part of me really wants it to be the spirit of a Viking because the history yeah. of that is um, a massive, massive thing that I'm interested in. And I, you know, I know quite a lot about the, the Norse people and, and Vikings. So yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed that one thing, and it's just it, cool to hear it. Yeah, it, it, it's quite interesting because some people will be like, ah, maybe because they've been dead for so long, they've learned the language, right? Right. But then again, it, it makes. But then it makes you wonder if there's a type. Again, this has got to sound crazy, but it's as if there's some time with temporal can they slap? Because it's how it's because if they're going into camp and asking someone to speak to someone. You you know what I'm trying to get in this point is mm. as if it's you're going back in time. See maybe, maybe bit, yeah. yeah 
Yeah, now, it's a bit strange. Some, yeah, wasn't there something around for, uh, like I remember hearing about this uh, quite a few years ago, that when, if a spirit is of a different culture or a different ethnic background and it's speaking its, its language, yeah. when they speak, it's in their language, language, but when it comes out, it's in ours. I just, I that just, was I... a thing. That was a thing that was around for a little while, and uh, I'm I'm wondering if that was ever dis, uh, disproved because I I just think that's just an easy cop out of a way not yeah, to explain yeah, why everyone presents English evidence yeah, uh, or people, or Japanese cultured ghost videos where they they only speak Japanese uh, and stuff. Like that. I think that's just a very a very umbrella term to try not to have to explain why they can't get. A French response in England or something like that because mm. we know it can be yeah. done because we've done it. Um, I mean, it, I find I find that so I find that so interesting, Lex, because you've asked to speak to someone in the camp, right? Mm-hmm. They've took yeah. you and they've went, "Yeah, I'll get you someone." So it makes you wonder it, what it, what the reality is like. It was weird. It wouldn't. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Sorry, go ahead. It, it, the weird thing was it wouldn't let me talk to them. It said I could talk to one woman. That was the weird thing. It would like there was of there was like a male response, and it wasn't agreeing with me at all. It did it was negatively answering questions, and it was almost hurrying me up. Like I think at one point it tells me to stop or something like that. And I was like, I just want to, I just want to confirm who you are. Can I speak to one of you? And it said only one. And I was like, who am I speaking to? And I, I can't remember. I haven't seen this clip for a little while now, and I can't remember what what it said, but it does indicate that it's a female. Uh, or I think I ask if it's a female I'm talking to, and it says yes, and then another one comes through and says stop, and it's like a very abrupt mm-hmm. male voice. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really conflicting. So I do feel like there was someone who was probably killed by the camp trying to talk to me, yeah. and then the Vikings were telling her, uh, telling me off, and trying to prevent me from talking to them. You know, I I also find it uh, before that we were standing around that big tree. Um, because that is the big landmark of, yeah, you know, right. of Sherwood Forest. And mm-hmm. I asked a bunch of questions there. As soon as I got there, um, soon as we, um, soon as we went over the, <laughs> as soon as we went over the fence, uh, because there's a big fence that goes around and mm-hmm. protect the tree and stuff. And we went over. It's only like a three foot fence, but uh, so we went there and uh, we were standing by the tree. I wanted to feel a tree that was over a thousand years old. Oh yeah, to be honest, yeah. it was absolutely incredible. And uh, as soon as it got close to the tree, I said, there's a crap load of spirit around this tree. There's oh, yeah. many, many spirit. And I literally asked the question, how many spirits are here? And it came out, it said 40. Wow. So it was, it was just absolutely insane. And, you know, as you guys are, are aware, uh, mm-hmm. Sherwood Forest mm-hmm. was on my bucket list of places yeah. that I wanted to go to. And it didn't disappoint. It really didn't yeah. disappoint. And the only thing was, I was disappointed by one thing uh, and one thing only with the Sherwood Forest and that me and Lex didn't get to skip down the path in tights. I don't regret that. I'm more than happy to never have to do that. Oh, you know something, guys? You're just going to have to come back to Sherwood Forest and do that, recreate that that image, you know? No. Yeah. I think you should, honestly. It's amazing. It's amazing. But you think was. you think about I'll that tree. No? You think about you think about that tree, right? And they say all things are living, right? That tree is nearly a thousand, mm-hmm. over a thousand years old. You think of what that tree has witnessed? Yeah. Well, it's funny because when we were walking down the path to go to the spot where the tree was, Ralph was telling us a bunch of different stories from GSI. It was, uh, and by the way, that was Ralph and Cheryl from GSI that were in that video. I just want to give them a shout out because they were great. They took us to another location as well uh, called the Beach Caves in uh, Stoke, which was uh, <laughs> which was amazing. I can't wait. People, I can't wait for people to see that video. And I actually capture what it looks like to be a shadow um, in the in the part of the in part of the caves. I put it up on Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, anyway, so. Uh, uh, they were. He was telling us a bunch of stories on the way down the tree and what they've been experiencing because they've been there several times. And mm-hmm. he told us a story about. It's it's not necessarily Robin Hood. There is another story about a Robin Hood type of person, mm-hmm. but he was stealing, but he wasn't giving it to the poor. He was just giving it to himself. So, um, supposedly he was being hunted. 
And he hid in the tree. Um, mm -hmm. And so they wouldn't find him. Well, I got on the SB7, are the stories true? And we got on the SB7, he hid. That's amazing. Which was like, wow. Yeah, like that's... it was just, it was just validation on what Ralph was telling us. And, and, uh, but there are the, the Robin Hood, obviously being the famous story and, and, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, maybe there is this, the part of that story is true, you know, of another guy stealing, yeah. but just not giving to the poor, uh, just yeah. giving them to himself and his mm -hmm. mates. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's just the Sherwood Forest. If you ever get an opportunity to go there, you have to go because oh, it's, yeah. it's really incredible. It really, really is. And oh, yeah. it's just one of the many spots that we went to. I do have one more clip that I want to show you. Oh, bring um, them on. Uh, I'm all excited here. Right you, know, is, you know, that uh, this is at the um, uh, Victorian Chapel that used to be a hospital at one point, and they made it into a chapel. Uh, nice. we, unfortunately, we weren't able to get inside, but we were standing outside of it, and we got a lot of activity on the outside of it as well. And uh, so if, uh, I know there was a person that stayed there that's very famous in the history nice. in the history books, and that is uh, Florence Nightingale, and she was not right. a fan of this place, uh, from what nice. I understand. It's where she said it was built wrong. Um, it's facing the wrong, like the wards when it was a hospital were the wrong way, so like as the sun was setting, the wards wouldn't get any... Like As the sun was up, the wards wouldn't get any of the sun because the windows are built in the wrong direction. So there, she fundamentally didn't like the idea that this hospital has been designed so the wards don't get sunlight. So the sun right. passes the other way. So they yeah, never yeah. see it. Um, and that was, a, that's as far as I'm aware, why she didn't like go in there. Are you ready? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's actually interesting, that. So I have this device in my hands, and what you can do is you can speak into it, we'll be able to hear you. You can tell us anything you want. My name is Brian. This is Lex. He said Brian. Was that Brian? It's, you tell us anything you want. My name is Brian. This is Lex. You said Brian. Was that Brian? It's just Brian said. and Lex. Did you say Brian? Did we hear you correctly? Can you tell me your name, please? Well, let me finish introducing you to everyone. There's Nando. There's Rosie. Well, let me finish introducing you to everyone. There's Nando. There's Rosie. Nando! <gasps> That's a Nando. One hundred percent Nando. There's Nando. There's Rosie. Nando. <gasps> wow. Yeah, so that one's really cool. Uh, we determined. Cool. I heard. I heard Dakota say that um, it says sounds like it says Brian and Lex. Uh, I think we determined that it says Hi Lex at the beginning. Uh, the, the, is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh, but the second one is what's more intriguing. Uh, Nando is a very unique name. You don't hear oh, it yeah. on the radio. <laughs> and to have yeah. it come out as soon as it did, like it was incredibly cool. So we just got two names straight away. But the Nando's one was really quite cool to to hear come out with the SP7. As because... I, yeah, I was, sorry, Chris, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, because every time you went to say, every time you went to say, we're, we're here, and you just you were just about to say the guy's name, the, the spirit of Fox would go, Nando. <laughs> you know, it's funny, it's, uh, 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 this is something I've always done on every investigation. Um, I always introduce myself, and um, if there's people around, I introduce yeah. them as well. Um, for me personally, it's just something that I think is respectful, and I really yes. think it helps 
guide the whole evening on your investigation, that just showing that you are going to be respecting whoever's going to come forward. Yeah. And that's something that's very, very important to me. And I continue to do, and I will always continue to do it. Yeah. Brilliant though. That's absolutely brilliant. I, I, yeah. I must say that was brilliant because it was, it's how it was, it's how it was, it's response because you were in the tap, you were in the tap of saying it's, the tap of saying the guy's name and it did it for you. Just to, just to shout out Nando and it was, it was one of those moments where you look at each other and go, did that just happen? Like, yeah. is it like, and we all get to witness it at, this, you know, we all get to witness it. And uh, there is something funny that happens after that. I'm sure it's going to be in one of the bloopers, but uh, I can't wait for um, us to commit. I can't wait for. Uh, I can't wait you know for what us to commit. About next, right? Hmm? You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh yeah. What happens after that? So hmm. uh, you know, it's funny. It's uh, it's. I don't know why why it happens. It happens on every investigation. It's just weird thing. You know, there's you always go on an investigation and something weird always happens. Oh, this yeah. always happens to me, and a, a lot of people know about it. But every investigation, when we start filming, for some reason, my fly is down. <laughs> and oh, so, right after that, right after that, I think I, I'm not sure if it was Sarah, if it was Rosie, and uh, they said, Sony said, your fly's down. <laughs> and everybody well, just starts laughing. Spit, the spirits out there, they get that way too. Yeah, it's just it was just funny, and uh, it's just uh, the, the I wish we could have gone inside. I think it would have been yeah. great if we went inside, but yeah. we got a lot of action because we went to the other side of the chapel. We had the cat balls down, and I was asking questions, and there it goes again. The cat balls going off, and yeah. uh, just asking so many different questions. And then right after that, we go to a we go to a graveyard that's connected to the uh, obviously the chapel. It's a little further down, but yeah. And we got some great responses there as well. And I can't even through all the footage. Music. I haven't gotten through all the footage yet, but um, the the whole trip was amazing, and these guys were great. And and again, I can't say enough about Portal to yeah. the Paranormal. Um, they were awesome. They really were because the last week uh, some things happened um, that were out of everybody's control. Uh, Rob. Uh, from the patrol, he had to go into work because a lot of his staff got COVID. So he oh, had to end up right. going to work. So we ended up having to cancel the last week with the patrol and portal through the portal to the paranormal came through and got us three or four more investigations. And uh, it was great. It was a great time. It really yeah. was. It's people are going to enjoy the videos. I, think, really I just can't wait. When are they? Yeah. When, are they when are they released? Mm. When are they released? When are they released? I'm looking at mine. I'm looking at mine. It's going to be a it's going to be a fourth and fifth season on Paraflex. Right. So uh, I'm looking the fourth season probably going to be starting around October, somewhere in there, because yeah. my third season on Paraflex starting in July. So uh, July, the beginning of July. So it's probably going to be around October, November, where I'm going to start the yeah. fourth season. Yeah. I don't know about Lex, but two to three months for me. Oh, two to three months. You might say no. Oh, yeah. the new. I am, I'm, but that's because I'm doing it better. This I'm actually doing a lot of work on making this good compared yeah. to my old video, older videos. Because uh, this yeah. is my second and third season, and I've made a lot of creative changes while through editing. Thanks to Brian giving me new, helping me get new software. But also, I've got a different vision to how I want my videos to look, and I'm really taking my time to make sure it's as well polished as uh, as possible for a YouTube video. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's going to, they're going to be great videos. And, you know, I'm going to, Lex is going to have a lot of my footage and yeah. I've got a lot of his. So yeah. we're going to transfer back and forth in footage. Obviously, we have two different editing styles. And, um, but uh, mine, if you're, if you're a member of Paraflex and if you're not, now's the time. Well, that's what um, I was just about to say to you, Brian. Do you want to punt out all your addresses and tell us all <laughs> where we can find everything? You got, uh, you got 10 minutes? You got 10 minutes oh, to spare? 10, 10 minutes. We've got, Dakota's we've got just looking night, very, want, very you know? serious. Dakota, I know. I think I actually think um, something's affecting Dakota. Really? I'm serious, yeah. Dakota, I'm serious. Okay? Something, I think there's something affecting him. He's, he's concentrating on something. 
he's concentrating. There's something running about him. I don't know if you've noticed. Have you noticed, Lex? There's something running about him. Yeah. What's going on? I've seen it course? moving about. I've seen whatever it is, but I don't know what it is. It's moving. It's. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's the same thing. It's been behind Brian. Hmm. Yeah. It's. I don't know. Can he even hear us? Oh, he can hear us. It, but he's. Um, it's as if there's. He's, I notice. I don't know what it is. There's just. I'm drawing to that cupboard next to uh, the the wardrobe next to you, Brian. I don't know what it is. There's something mm-hmm. in there. I, I, did, I mm-hmm. don't even want to look in there. Eh. Well, there's, uh, the other night I was. Uh, what was it? A week and a half ago, sitting in the TV room, and I saw a black shadow go across my ceiling. Yeah. And uh, that's what I normally. That's what I normally see when I see things. I see it's yeah. black. Uh, it's black. So anyhow, other than that, um, where you can find me, there's so many places you can find me, oh. and and I never I never say this first, and I should always say it first. It's Parapost Network. Uh, the yes. app. If you want to download it through iOS or Android, you can download it today. It is free. You're not paying anything to download the app, and uh, it's a community of everything under the paranormal umbrella. Whether it's uh, you know paranormal yeah. investigators, supernatural, cryptics, um, or cryptids, and uh, enthusiasts as well. Uh, yeah. If you're an enthusiast of all these different things, uh, you can come over to the page and and uh, contribute uh, your thoughts and your maybe pictures that you have. It's everybody's in the community yeah. news feed, so everybody sees that everybody's stuff. <clears throat> yeah, most of the Oh, you go. go ahead, go ahead, Chris. I was just going to go say ahead. that Parapost is amazing. It's like Facebook, but it's like I like the the map that you've got, where it's all the haunted yeah. locations. I yeah, think that's I think that's brilliant, guys. Check yeah. out when you go. Yeah, and Lex said he was going to put all the haunted spots into the haunted locations once he gets some yeah. time. So there will be a bunch of new spots going up there. Uh, the second thing is Parapost Network Central Facebook page. Uh, this was originally for the app, but I've turned it into a podcast page and a live streaming page for your investigations. So if you want to come over and become uh, get your investigations up there or your podcast, just give me a message and we'll get you as an editor and we'll put you up there and you can do your podcast. You can do your live investigations and stuff like that. And okay. uh, oh, yeah. it's really growing. It's uh, We've had it for about two and a half months now, three months now, two and a half months, three months. And it went from 250 to now 2200. Wow. So uh, it's good. doing well. It's doing really, really well. You can also find me on Huntophobia Can- uh, Canada, the Facebook group page. Uh, you can go over there. It's public. You can post what you want to post, um, obviously, within the topic of the room. And you can also find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on TikTok. And uh, TikTok's going well. I'm going to start. What is yep. going on? <laughs> it's, it's, no, that, there's people in the chat. The people in the chat can see something behind you, Brian. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, TikTok is, I'm going to start doing some more lives on TikTok. Uh, so that's that's starting Instagram, Twitter, like I said. And uh, obviously you can find me on Parapost under my name. And uh, my public Facebook group page is under Brian J. Laverty, L-A-V-E-R-T-Y. So if people mm-hmm. want to. Add me as a friend they can do that as well yeah. so the, all the oh, links one to... more one more oh, and one Lex more. always giving me crap for not saying this no it's uh, mine no okay it's mine. sorry it's yours Lex is next day anyway, so... <laughs> it's Lex and sorry Ra- raymond's already told me in the chat that it's mine mm. yeah mm. lex okay yeah i see that now <laughs> <laughs> do you want to he also, tell he, us all he bit? also oh. said earlier that he wanted to make his order i, I did i chose to oh. ignore that one <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I mean, if he wants it, it's been sat in the window for ages. Here you go, Raymond. Come and get your order. Is that, I, dra- is I drank that the drink he ordered. But... Is that pancakes? Is that pancakes? No. Why would it be pancakes? It's a burger. No, like, uh, because I know the breakfast, the breakfast, pancakes at McDonald's. Don't nope. they have those still? I don't know. I only that order looks burgers. Like the container for them, doesn't it? It I'm a like... burger man. Okay. Oh my god. Anywho. I, <laughs> Lex, please tell us all about you and where we can find you and such. I feel, I feel like I'm auditioning for Blind Date. I'm telling oh. you about myself. There you go. Um, <laughs> when, uh, nah, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot simpler to find online. Mm. Uh, I am on Twitter at Lex Paranormal YT. Uh, feel free to message me, comment on stuff. 
tweet me, whatever. I reply to everybody, so that's fine. I'm more than happy to answer questions and whatnot. Uh, second one would be my YouTube channel, which is where season one of Capture the Unknown, my investigation mm-hmm. series, is already completed and on. And two and three, as you've heard tonight, are going to be on there in the next uh, two to three months, I believe. Um, and that, again, is just Lex Paranormal. It will be a big purple ghost logo, almost like him. So you know you found the right place. But also, <laughs> you'll recognize this beautiful hunk of meat. Mm-hmm. I look, I look different in my videos, to be fair. I'm getting okay. well out of control. I've got a ponytail now. I mean, yeah. look how my I image is that changing. That is that a ponytail? Wait, yeah. is that I've so many styles? <laughs> I've joined the samurai, my friends. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm becoming a higher species of being. But, um, yeah, Didn't so there's Luke a YouTube. Skywalker have that? Luke Skywalker? Uh, Didn't Luke Skywalker have that? No, in the newer don't, version do not, no, no, he didn't. Anakin did. Anakin okay, did. Whoever it was. So I did quite gone. Don't, oh, don't pretend you know Star it. Wars, Brian. No, Especially not, not on Star Wars. Oh. Okay. Oh. Some of us are excited for the Kenobi series, uh. which is on Disney Plus at the end of the month. I'm plugging Obi Wan. <laughs> Let's get in the <laughs> highest rated show on Disney. Sorry. Oh, anyway, yeah, so my YouTube you <laughs> YouTube <laughs> paranormal. I also have a TikTok account, which is again Lex Paranormal YT. I post weird stuff on there. Not really paranormal stuff anymore because I don't like TikTok really. I don't know. Mm. I make so I don't know how to use it. That's why I'm not. I'm not a a 21 year old girl promoting an OnlyFans account, so I can't really use TikTok <laughs> that well. Um, because that's what that dancing app has turned into. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and, lastly, <laughs> and lastly, and uh, lastly, and lastly, I'd like to promote my Brian and my talk show. Uh, we have every single Sunday, yes. 9 p.m. GMT, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's through the lens with Brian and Lex. It's on YouTube. It's on the Power Post Central Network. We are hosted mm-hmm. by DNTV, so we're also on their page on Facebook as well. Um, we are trying to get those numbers up on YouTube. We're getting decent amount of watch time and viewers and stuff on Facebook, but we want yeah. YouTube to start reflecting that too. So if you would like to go over and subscribe to Through the Lens with Brian and Lex as well and tune into one Bye. of our shows where we have a different guest on every single week. Um, and we're a heavy promotional show. That's what we do. We promote people's podcasts and yeah. YouTube channels or, and what stuff like that. So again, if anyone is interested in becoming a part of that show and wanting to come on as a guest, they can feel free to contact myself or Brian if mm-hmm. they have a podcast, a paranormal podcast or a paranormal channel that they would like to promote. Um, that's what we do it for. So that's all yeah. where you can find this beautiful specimen. Yeah. Well, you we can also I did forget one. I did forget. Oh, one. I forgot you forgot one. one? Yes. What did you forget? I, the reason I'm saying it is because of the fact that you can find Huntophobia on YouTube. The reason I'm saying it is I'm finally working on the second part of the video that I did a few months ago. I only did mm-hmm. the first part. I am now working on the second part of that video, which hopefully will be released at the end of the week. So um, finally, finally. So you can follow me at Huntophobia over there you on go. YouTube as well. Too many, too many spots. Well, there you go. I mean, Who's all the links... All the links for Lex and Brian are down below on this live what tonight. This what is what, what is, is Raymond? What is Raymond saying? What's Stay Raymond? with me, Brian. Viva Le Bam. What's that? <laughs> That's... Am I, I'm not following that. I, I don't. Is that I'm going right over my head? It, uh, I'm trying to remember who was it that talked. It might be a reference to Bam Margera. Which Raymond said I look like a knockoff Bam Margera oh, when we okay. had him on the show last okay. week. Okay, okay, I got it. <laughs> Which I don't today. I'm discount Johnny Depp. That's what I am today. You? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another thing I'd like to say. Amber Heard is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Amber Heard. <laughs> okay, Justice this is gotta Johnny. go on your podcast. So let's let's Which keep on doing it. I'm spreading it's, positivity. Uh... It's just fine. It's, it's, it's I, I'm totally fine. Defend, defending people who are it's just I'm just going that the celebrity is faking to be beaten up. It's quite bad. Well, I did see your I did see your tweet today, or was it you, or was it? Wait, there's else? like nine of them. I'm like no, I'm no, like no. heavily tweeting. I saw this one. Thing. I saw one today. I don't. I think it was your tweet or somebody else's that they have set the cast for uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Johnny Depp is not in it. Well, he got oh. cancelled like when she made the allegations. Yeah. It's not. It's not yeah, a new so. thing. Oh, I know it's not a new thing. But it, I only now. watch it. I only watch Pirates of the Caribbean for Johnny Depp. No, no I, one's I, gonna watch I, it. I would, no, I, would watch that, I would think that the way the case is going, and it's looking like it's in his favor, um, yeah. and that she lied about everything. That mm-hmm. after all this is said and done, they would go, okay, well, he's telling yeah, the but truth. He, he's yeah. not gonna go back to Disney because of the way they treated him. 
Is Same as Warner Brothers, I think. I think he's done with like big those those two studios because of this. Okay. But I just wanted to say my piece. I'm not very quiet about it on Twitter. So it's it's not very nice what's been what's been done to him, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, no. and it's, things like this are needing to be taken more seriously, especially men happening. Because, you know, came you know what I mean? It's funny guys that she went to the bathroom in his side of the bed. And, and would, say, bed yeah. would say that this girl is not all there. <laughs> no, she's nuts, mate. You know, she is so. absolutely. I mean, she looks like she was snorting something on the stand yesterday. So yes, I seen, I seen that. I seen Same that. Place, I seen though. that. Yeah, but, I seen that. But uh, I, you know, I'm, I, the only reason I feel strongly about it is because I see a lot of, um, especially females that have been victims of abuse who are really yeah. angry about how she's betraying it. Um, so I, that's why I'm not hiding my support on Twitter. Yeah. I fully stand behind Johnny and his team, uh, and I stand behind all victims of domestic violence anyway or dv yes. anyway because it's disgusting behavior from both men and women mm-hmm. and uh, i'm glad i'm glad he took it to public trial because we can see it happens to both yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. so dakota oh you you've got a website now too dakota do you want to t- say anything about anything before we go off the air uh, yes, we do have the official Bald and Bonkers website, baldandbonkers.net, where you can catch audio podcasts. We are looking to get a sort of TV network set up on the website to help showcase all of our members' channels. We also mm-hmm. do have Parapost listed as a friend of the network, so you can yes. go ahead and check them out as well. All sorts of new merch coming out, all sorts of new projects coming up, including a live investigation of a UFO crash out of Canada, so I'm Definitely wow. going to be looking into that. Yes. Plus, we also Got have it. more information about the documentary coming soon, yes. which hopefully with our distributor can get us to Voodoo, Gaia, a lot of the major networks. So we'll see yeah. how that goes. And our show tomorrow, Dakota, Who? Do, what special guest do we have on tomorrow? Yeah, one we definitely wouldn't cancel on. No. We have Lisa coming from, what is it, My Mystical... What is that again? How does our, our channel go? We have Lisa Fry from My Mystical Life. The This was the lady that found out apparently Chris and I have ET relations and mm, now let's just yeah. say something weird always happens when she comes. Wow, that's weird. Yeah. So, that's uh, really you know what? Weird. I do want to say one thing before we go off the air here. You what? guys placed an ad on Parapost Network and talk about that for a minute because I want people to go over to Parapost Network, click on that ad and tell them where it goes and what it's for. Yeah, I think it's amazing. So, when it comes to a lot of the UFO subject, there is not a lot out there when it comes to the actual context. These stories, mm-hmm. essentially, they say, "Oh, this person says this weird thing happened. That mm-hmm. there was that the weird thing in the sky, and that's the end of the conversation." Yeah, there are more and more reports coming out of one-on-one contact, hybrid children. I mean. There's weird stuff going on with this K2 as we were on live, I've noticed. Yeah. And you see, this is a topic that is exploring, needs to be explored a lot more because we have the situation in Ukraine. There's all sorts of activity going on that cannot be ignored, and there is going to be a huge global shift. The ad on Parapost is for the Kickstarter campaign to try to gather up yes. funding for the documentary which we are calling <laughs> We Are Light. Yes. Several of our more popular guests have agreed to help us out with that, which I cannot thank them enough. Yeah. Let's just say the situation around this documentary, it is evolving to the point where contactees having to go to the hospital are all of a sudden having their blood stolen. Yeah. There's active suppression efforts. Everyone who's shows that they have activity going on all of a sudden has computer issues to the point some electronics are actually blowing up mm-hmm. and uh the most recent one may be men in black visitations as well so yeah, we are sense. onto something yeah. huge i saw something they're coming on the up. history channel the other day about uh, the men in black thing and it mm-hmm. was really really super cool um it was a long program but it was it was it was interesting it was really really interesting and uh, but I, I and this is I wanted you to talk about this because first I thought it was great because I looked at it yeah. and and uh, stuff like that and I also wanted to say thank you for uh, advertising on Parapost it was uh, it was it was really 
it was really cool. And when I saw that, I said, you know what, much love guys, much love. And uh, you guys are great. And I love coming on your show. And I want to say thank you for having us on your show today. I just oh. love everything about you both. And you guys are great. And uh, continue doing what you're doing, guys, because you're doing great, great things. And I enjoy it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching your journey as you go further and further. And oh, yeah. uh, hopefully some way, somehow, me and Lex can be a little bit of a part of that. And uh, Come back anytime you want. You know, and uh, you guys are doing amazing things. So I want to say thank you for having us on. Thank you. Of course. Thanks for coming on. So we'll talk to you after the the live, guys. And thank you, Lex, for coming on. And thank you, Brian. And remember, guys, please check out those links. Please go to Parapost because I think it's amazing. All the links will be there. And please check out Brian's channel on YouTube. Seen through the lens, especially Lex's channel. Because come on. It's only three months. We need to wait till we get the bloody videos. Out. <laughs> Look at that. It, nice. is, it is going to be worth the wait. Trust me, it's going to be worth the wait. Yeah, yeah. And I got a documentary coming out soon too, as well. Yeah. Yes. So it's going to but, be it's going to be good things. Good things. Add, coming. add that. Add that to item number twenty five on the list of plugs that Brian is now obligated to make. <laughs> well, wait, I know. Wait, I you went to edit the else. Wait a minute. I got one more. Everybody, there's something coming June 1st that's going to blow everybody away. And uh, watch out. There's going to be a video released on June 1st that's going to say everything about this. Get ready, 2023. Mm -hmm. You don't want to advertise your car in case you're getting a new one. <laughs> My Nissan Murano is a <laughs> We'd also like to plug Glade for making it back to Hell Knight. Yes, that's right. Let's actually go for our our sponsors, Dubby Energy that's Drinks. Right. This stuff is effective, so as someone who has, like yeah. me who has a high caffeine tolerance, that yeah. definitely helps me keep awake so I can keep track of all my projects, which include up uh, well, there's also the documentary. We also have a couple other movies coming out, not necessarily paranormal-related, and there is also a couple of video yeah. games I'm in as well coming out very soon. Oh, so. That's cool. Yeah. I, watched your, I watched your live, I think it was yesterday, the day before you were playing a video game. Oh, yeah, like yeah that's why. Yeah, it was good. Oh, yeah, I'm actually in video games, man, so yes, I have an excuse. He's in his own video game. Yeah. He's in his own cool. video game. Yeah. I'm in at, at least three now. We can go yeah. on for like two or three hours, couldn't we? I know. I know. At half past five in the morning, we did, before he is, we'd still be yapping away, and Lex would just be in the corner. Oh, I'd probably be asleep. Playing with his. You're making us jealous. You do know that, Lex. That is terrible. You're playing with your beard, and then you're playing with your ponytail, and you're playing with your hair. And us, 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 pair of guys, I was, wondering how, long it, really I was jealous. wondering how long it would take for you bald fuckers to notice I was doing that the whole show. Just <laughs> running my fingers through my hair. Oh. <laughs> See. Terrible. You know what? I said it before you came on, Lex, earlier, that there are stats out there that bald men are considered the most beautiful men in the world yeah. and well, also considered the most intelligent. I, so, I bet you any money that was that, facts. That, test, that, that fact was probably made by a bald man who wanted yeah. to make himself feel better. So it's fine. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, please join us tomorrow night, 10 p.m. So, we'll catch you all later. We'll be off to the madhouse now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.